Welcome to Terra Tutorials. Here's another probability theory problem. Um, this one's getting a little bit more difficult than the previous one. This is a um, bivariate or joint PDF. Um, as you'll notice, there are X and Y, not just X. So it brings a little bit of a level of uh, more complication. You'll notice that we have two different um, bounds here for the Y and X values. And um, we have both X and Y's inside our um, function. So um, let's get started. Oh, and also there's three components to this problem, A, B, and C. So A is determine the joint PDF of U and V. B is R, X, and Y independent. And C is our U and V independent. So it's a, once again another diverse set of problems that will only make you better. Okay, so let's begin. So the first thing we want to do when we want to determine the joint PDF of U and V is we want to handle um, U and V. And what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to since we know that uh, um, we, can, we can get Y, or we, basically in these two things we want to make this equal to X and this equal to Y. And the reason why we don't make this equal to x is because there's no x's present. And the reason why I don't make this y is because y can only be this one. It might be a little bit easier to see once I start writing it out. So um, let me just rewrite these again here. So this is just that, and this is just that. Um, and so let's do the conversions on it. So x is equal to u y. So why is that the case? Well, um, y multiplies on both sides and then x equals u y, just like that. And this is the simplest one right here. You just flip around those. y equals v. Now, um, this is something that I had problems with myself and um, that is that you don't just stop right here you have to make sure that everything on the right hand side of this equal sign is in terms of u and v. There can't be any x's or y's contained in there. So what do we do with this y? Well we just go down to here, refer to this, and just plug v in there. So that's u v. So our x is equal to u v and y is equal to v. Okay, so now here's our blueprint. And this is something that you should remember. G, U, V. This is the joint PDF. This is the blueprint we're going to use to assemble it. Function X. Um, U and V get passed in. Y, U and V get passed in. Times the absolute value of the Jacobian matrix. So now we're going to assemble the Jacobian matrix J. And we've already found that, and we've already found that. Um, but I'll, I'll notate that a little bit later so that you get an idea. So the Jacobian matrix is as follows. It is the partial derivative dx du dy du dx dv dy dv and notice that um, I'm not drawing it as like a matrix like with those little things on the tops here because this is the determinant so in the very end once we figure out all these we're then going to take the determinant of it so let's find out the um, derivative of u with respect to x. So um, we're going to come up here and we're going to find out that this is equal to v. And let's go to the bottom here. The derivative um, of u with respect to y. We're going to come over um, up here. We're going to find out there's no y's in there, or there, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to come down here, and we're going to 
discover that there um, are no u's here. So this just becomes zero. Derivative of um, v with respect to x. We're going to come down to um, right here. We're going to find out that that's just u. And then the last one, derivative of um, v with respect to y. That's just going to be 1. So now the determinant is that multiplied by that minus that multiplied by that. So v times 1 minus u times 0. Well, that's equal to 0. That's equal to v. Okay, so we're kind of running out of space here. But, um, well... I'll just stick something right here. So now we're going to assemble. So now that we have j, we found j, which is this right here. And the absolute value doesn't matter because there's no negatives here. So it doesn't make a difference. Um, we have this and we have this. So let me tell you. So this right here is equal to that. And this right here is equal to that. So now we just do um, f uv um, v times v um, equals. So now what we can do is we can just plug this into up here because we have that. So all this is is 4 times uv so uv gets plugged into x, and then we have v gets plugged into y. So um, times v times v. So what does this equal? This equals 4uv cubed. Okay. We're not entirely done yet. We still have to reevaluate the bounds. So here's our bounds as before. Now we have to reevaluate them in terms of u and v. So we're going to write the bounds down just like we had them before. We'll leave some space in between. We're just going to substitute that into there and that into there. As simple as that. However, there, there, oh, there is another thing that we need to address once we do that. So this will be 0 like so. That's the old one. This is the new, this is the updated one. We have um, this right here. Well, this is equal to uv um, is equal to zero is less than uv is less than one. And what we need to address here is that we can't have, we can't have that. We can't have u times v. So what do we do? Well, we determine that we want to have u in the center here because we already have v. We wouldn't have, want to have a redundant v here. So we do u. I'll write my u's as a little sign on the bottom. And then we're going to divide the v over here. The v gets divided over to the um, 0 too, but 0 divided by anything is just going to be 0 again. So there's our updated um, our updated limits. Now, uh, our updated bounds, actually. Um, to finish this joint PDF, we need to assemble it in the proper joint PDF form. It's going to take up a little bit of space, but uh, I'll do it up here. So f of u and v is equal to, well, we just found out it was this, 4uv3. And then now we found out the new bounds are these two right here. So as follows. And then o dot w dot is abbreviated for otherwise. So this is our joint PDF of u and v. Now we want to determine whether or not x and y are independent. So how do we how do we determine independency or independence? Uh, well, this is the blueprint. 
if the function, if the uh, join PDF is equal to the marginals, if this is if this is true, then it's independent. So now we have to calculate the marginals. And we're not going to be looking at the one that we just made because it's in terms of x and y. So we got to calculate the marginals here. Okay, so the um, marginal is simply, if you have x here, you're going to want to do it with respect to y. If you have, if you're, so if you're finding the marginal of x, you want to have it with respect to y. If you're finding the marginal of y, you want to have it with respect to x. So it's just the opposite of it. So because of it, it's respect to x, we want to do respect to y. So we come up here and we look at the bounds. The y's bounds are from 0 to 1. So we quickly plug that in here. Bam. Like that. Now we, what we want to do is we want to plug in the function with respect to y, dy. Well, what is this equal to? 4xy squared over 2. Um, that's just going to be, so it's just going to be like that. Kind of a shortcut. I mean, not really a shortcut, but not as verbose as I could make it. Um, here, now we're going to do the marginal uh, with uh, of y. It's 0 and 1 because x is in the region 0, 1. And once again, with respect to x, it'll be 2y. And so now what we want to do is we want to uh, remember this right here, and we want to determine independency. We found this and we found that, and now we want to determine whether or not they're independent. So we just multiply this times that. 2x times 2y equals 4xy. Is 4xy equal to that? Yep, it is. So, yes, it's independent. Okay. Let's look at the independence of u and v. We have to find the um, partial of u. So this is so what we did before uh, finding the joint PDF of u and v is entirely important in here. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't be able to figure this out. So now instead of referring to up here, we're going to be referring to this one now. So we want to take the marginal of, of u. That's going to be 0, 2, and since it's u, we're going to look at v. Um, v is right there from 0 to 1. For some reason, my teacher has um, 1 divided by u over here, but I did not understand why that happened. It could be that I'm wrong. Uh, but now we have the function, the de derivative of v, or the... Um, with respect to v, and this is going to be equal to for u um, these fours can cancel out um, oh, this is a v, not a u um, and that will be equal to u yeah it'll be equal to u I believe okay and then now we want to find the partial uh, v and we have the bounds or we have the limit yeah right there u is between 0 and 1 divided by v And we're going to put them in there with respect to u.
Alright, so this is going to be equal to Sorry about doing that. Believe. Yeah. This will be. Um, uh, the page is moving. Let me just. Uh, okay. To. Uh, this V3 gets put up there, and that'll just be. 2v. So now we want to multiply them together. 2v times u. 2vu, is that equal to that? No, it isn't. So it's not independent. And that's that. So uh, overview of the problem, we found the marginals of u and v. And we wanted to determine whether or not they're independent. So we multiplied the resulting values u and 2v together, and we determined that they're not independent. Part b, with respect to um, x and y, whether or not they're independent, we determined the marginals of x and y, and we multiplied them together, and we found out that it's equal to 4xy, which is indeed equal to the joint PDF of x and y. So it is independent. Part A, we determine the joint PDF of U and V, which came in use later in Part C. So that's that for this tutorial.